Hello and welcome back everybody once again to the Vietnam Esports Champions League 2014 to the upper bracket final game number three between Mythrust and Scythe and of course Mythrust they won game number one quite convincingly but Scythe they completely turned it around in game number two I think it was a 17 minute GG but now this is the last deciding game who will get to the grand final straight away and who goes down to the lower bracket my name is Coacher, and joining me for the third and last game will be Master Risk. Yeah, I will join you for the last or third game. And I'm really happy that Scythe has actually stepped up their games uh, from the game first game. And they really show that why they are here in the Uber Bracket Final, that they deserve a spot here in the Uber Bracket Final. Anyways, if we look at the draft, um, Mistress started off with the Doom and go with the Morphling. Meanwhile, we see like a typical Shadow Team in Mirana lane. Yeah, and so far we haven't seen a single Mirana in this series. Mm. We did see the Shadow Demon last game, of course. And when Shadow Demon and Mirana just really solid, but Mythrust, they are banking it more on their core straight away. Doombringer just good in any phase of, phase of the game, more or less. Especially since ultimate, sca ultimate scales really well into the late game. Because the more items you have, the more the Doom actually does. And Morphling, man, I think it was the first game where we saw the Morphling not getting any farm at all. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and it's, like Shadow Team and Mirana, the pick up is it's just just uh, show that this is gonna be a, a really interesting game from a lot of action happening around the map. So they take out the Tinker and the Invoker. Um, Invoker, we have actually not seen him yet in the series. Um, yet I still think he's pretty well good here. Um, but I I really think that Sive should ban out the Tide Hunter because. Tidehunter and his Kraken Shell against the Mirana Arrow is just a pain in the ass. Oh yeah. Plus, it's... me... Do... Can... Maybe they think that Myth is gonna run a Doom offlane or something? Um, so far, I, ex I think I expect like a Doom offlane. They could still get the Lich, he's still in the pool, and, or Dazzle, and, and do a dual lane with the, the, both Doom and Shadow Demon. Not, not Dazzle, sorry. And Doom on the offlane, that's also pretty strong. Oh, so yeah, so they take out the Lich and they pick the Tidehunter. That's also possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, if you don't want to ban it out, well, they had the option to go for it or not ban it out rather since they had the first pick in the second phase here. Yeah, and that's true. Now, well, to be honest, even if this goes to the later stages, Scythe, having a Shadow Demon against the Morphling is really good because the two Morphling illusions are stronger than the Morphling itself mm. because they do 60% damage, I think illusion so if you can actually properly disrupt the morphling in the later stages that's a lot of possible potential counter yeah damage. but it's easy to counter just with if if, if myth trust pick up the abaddon now they they can actually just uh, dodge that <laughs> that dodge the the arrow because um if they go like aggressive and they have the tide on the solar bottom against the doom and they get the abaddon on myth trust i'm pretty sure it's going to favor the the myth trust uh, easy lane and be more difficult for Scythe to get the kills. Oh, yeah, but then their photic shield is just so good against the Mirana. Yeah, but does it justify itself? Is the hero good enough or viable enough otherwise as well? Um, against the Mirana Shadow Demon lineup, I would it's possible, definitely possible. Um, Rubik is also nice, um, he can just. Yeah, he, if he can steal Ravage or something, that will be really nice as well for them. But he's also pretty squishy in the early, so if 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 Scythe try decides to go aggressive and they get like a, a maybe Lina, Lina is possible for them. He's gonna suffer a lot, Rubik. Yeah, I mean Rubik, especially if like you mentioned, Scythe, if they go for an aggressive try lane, Rubik is he well, he's kind of a defensive support anyway. So maybe can keep players alive with just telekinesis mm -hmm. and throwing them back. But he doesn't really yeah. provide too much into an actual fight because level 1 Fate Bolt doesn't do all that much. Mm -hmm. So he needs a couple of levels before he can start properly fighting. Mm -hmm. But Scythe, they go for a Grave King, so they can definitely fight. And yeah, definitely fight. Uh, maybe they would just go with the safe thing and just go with uh, defensive and, and, and just stop the Doom to not get any experience at farm. And they can easily just kill him with that line of Shadow Demon into Wrath King's Son and Miran Arrow. So Doom, Doom's array is going to have a hard time, depending on if he goes offlane. Maybe they will just put him in the middle. But we will see what they will pick next. 
Um, still, the Abaddon is really good here, to be honest, because he can still... They have a lot of stun, and he's pretty tanky later on with his level 6 ultimate. Yeah, it's definitely would be kind of refreshing to see like some different heroes coming into the pool as well overall. Mm. Plus, I I think I actually saw one game, one professional game or semi-professional game, however you want to call it, with a abandoned Aghanims. But oh, yeah. he got the Aghanims when their team won already anyway within the next few minutes, so it didn't really come into play at all. And I would I would just so like to see that like how strong it can actually be. Mm. But have you, have I, you had I, any I think, experience with I it? I think with Abaddon, Sorry, with the Acceptor, they buffed it. Um, it so that when he when he when he got it, that if you hit him while he's in ultimate form, he will get he gain like the damage or something like that. I'm not completely sure. Oh but, man! <laughs> so he will get like pretty fat, but. Well, we're not gonna see an Abaddon in this game. They picked up the Enchantress, so it means it seems like yeah, Mistress will just play it safe and go with the Enchantress in their jungle, and while Morphling and Rubik farming. So, still, they take out the Viper. That's really good. Vipers, I mean, yeah, Viper against Doom. If Scythe had Viper, I, I, like Viper is really, a really really good counter to Doom. It slows him so much that he can't even move. Well, at least actually all heroes, but. I hate playing um, Doom against a Viper. Can that maybe mean that Scythe wants to go for the Wraith King carry and have the Mirana as support? Since Viper is really good against the Wraith King, just kites him around completely? Yeah, it's possible both things. But I, th I think they need Mirana carry more than Wraith King. He just scales better with his range, so he just needs the arrow to initiate. But it. Yeah, it depends. If they want to roam with Shadow Demon and Mirana, of course. Ah, uh, they plot Seeker again. <laughs> I it guess Scythe is like, why fix something that ain't broken? Indeed. It worked so well for them in the, first, in the second game. But Bloodseeker against the Morphling, of course the silence is really nice. Um, against the Doom was this ultimate, because Doom is pretty fast. That's also really good. So yeah, I'll, I like the Bloodseeker. It's probably gonna be a Bloodseeker mid again. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely it was really nice last game. He got a lot of farm and so far, with Trust, they can still pick up themselves a mid laner if they want to send the Doom off lane. But it's not like Bloodseeker has to be scared of anything that Myth Trust has so far. Rubik, not the scariest of you know, like supporting, or not supporting, but roaming supports. But they go for a Dragon Knight mid lane and well, Bloodseeker definitely gonna be able to farm up against a Dragon Knight. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I will rate the, the, the DK on that lane up, but of course he has the backup from Enchantress. So, it's gonna be a nice uh, matchup to watch the middle lane, how it will go and progress. So, again, they got DK, it fits pretty well with the push uh, from Enchantress and yeah, they actually needed something to push faster the towers. They have Enchantress for push and now DK. Wow, and actually we might see, well never mind, we're, the Titan is obviously farming, but Miracle picks it up, he's usually just like the tri-lane farmer for their team. Yeah, maybe they will swap. Man, they're just tricking us. <laughs> I, I've seen it like every now and then, it's like when you go for like a full support, it's like what, what are they doing, then mm. they swap it around. Just to screw with our heads. Yeah, he goes to pause. Let's see if this web. They're gonna wait for the pause to end, <laughs> if, if at all. To be honest, I mean, a farming Tide Hunter is something like safe lane farming Tide Hunter that is. I don't think it's worth it because he's very, very, very uh, level dependent. So he needs to be solo on the lanes. Either you put him mid or you put him bottom. And while going aggressive with uh, Mirana, Shadow Demon, and Worth King. So I guess it will be like a solo bottom tight against the Doom and a try lane top aggressive. Meanwhile we see the Bloodseeker again middle. I mean, tight Hunter definitely would hold his own against the Doombringer. Just Anchor Smash is so damn strong versus a melee hero. Mm. And Doom can't really do anything at all to harass the tight Hunter back. But we will see how they actually want to lane this. I guess we can just go over the lineups as the game is paused anyway. As for Myth up on the dire side. Noki will be playing the Enchantress with KYT on the Doombringer, Mypro playing the Dragon Knight, 
Momo up on the Rubik, and the last one for them will be Lakels on his Morphling. On the other side, we see Chibix on the Bloodseeker, uh, Miracle on the Tidehunter, Skillless Wrath King, sorry, uh, is uh, Machu, and Dazzle. <laughs> I keep mixing them up, but Shadow Demon is uh, the long Chinese name, uh, and Lobby on the Mirana. In yeah. item build, it looks like it's going to be Wrath King uh, carry, meanwhile, Mirana is just the support because he got the wards on sentries. And they actually have boots on Shadow Demon, so they want to go for the first blood. And oh, maybe they will spot us. Poor Noki, should be an easy kill. Oh, no, actually. Nope, never mind. Noki actually turns around for a little while. There's a long range disruption. Arrow to follow, spot on. And I'd be surprised if he gets away. And yeah, there was no way Miracle actually getting the first blood as well. So Tidehunter they're off to a really good start. And still, we have no idea what their lanes are gonna be. Yep. So again, very nice or smart by Enchantress, he anticipated that they will block out the jungle. So he would just move to the enemy jungle and have like a free free jungle for himself. Oh, the arrow's gonna miss on Rubik, but it was close. Yeah, it was, was a really nice dodge actually, just barely got vision of it before. Yeah, he saw it. Uh, well, I mean this observer world is pretty damn nice. You have to know where the Shadow Demon and Miran are if you want to stay alive. Mm. And well, we're inside. Off to a good start. Chibix will be, of course, the mid lane with just starting Tango, Squelling Blade, and he's gonna go for the bottle again. So, wants to really abuse his uh, Blood Rage. So, it's really, really important that DK gets a good start in this game so he can just um, help out the other lanes if they should dive them towers. Um, yeah. Let's see. So, Morphling solo top so far? And yeah, Rubik's also coming in. Well, I mean, Breaking definitely should be just getting a pretty nice amount of farm. Rubik can't really do anything to a Breaking, especially since he has a stout shield as well. And if Rubik comes out to maybe try to set up the gank, then that is the point where Shadow Demon and Mirana will strike. I mean, this Trident is just so damn deadly, especially since Morphling, he went for the morph early on, and he's morphed heavily into Agility as well. Mm. So, if they just catch him with the disruption, he is like 90% dead. Well, at least so. Noki is getting some nice farm and maybe he actually wants to set up a kill on Chibix. Chibix is down to half HP. He has two trolls as well. Two and snares, come on. Let me see that micro Noki. It could be the first boss here in the middle lane. Oh, there is one and snare. There's the dragon tail. Actually, they stagger their stuns a little bit. Breathe fire, one right click. Actually boosts up my pros damage, but the, oh, the tower, the blood rage, oh, bottling, no, not gonna be enough. So at least he gets the counter kill, of course he doesn't get XP from it, but still worth it for myth. Yeah, Morphling is really suffering here in the top lane, he only has 3 last hits. Meanwhile, Wrath King has 10, or oh, sorry, 11 now. So it looks pretty, pretty good for Scythe, actually, this game, in the opening. Yeah, and... The thing is that, like, even if they leave the Brave King solo, which they are doing at the moment, he can still get a decent amount of farm, probably, I mean, Rubik. Just not much he can do together with a Morphling. The burst damage just isn't there uh, until you go get higher levels into Fate Bolt as well as the Waveform. But yeah. now, my pro has a bottle. They are smoking up as well. There's an Invis room on my Invis room on my pro. And this might be a huge clash again. One troll is gonna time out in actually 7 seconds time. Center, of course, is there for a longer time, so can they get the kill on Chibix? My pro needs to get with the Dragon Tail, he starts it up. The Troll is there as well, Centaur, stun, will they pair there? Yes. Actually, no, Chibix somehow still alive, he's slowed down by Noki. I can't believe they actually come, somehow failed it, the last Dragon to get the kill. Will they get a counter kill? Nope. There is the Centaur stun up onto the Shadow Demon, nice disruption, trying to buy some time, but Noki, the right clicks, they are enough, to 2 HP, nope. Last Dragon right still flying after him, and now Lobby, he doesn't have the leap, he's one creep short of level 2, oh my god. Can they get the kill enchant? 5 seconds cooldown. So he's at least gonna escape my pro getting silenced off by Chibix just to make sure that breathe fire doesn't come. But man, that was so good for me. Yeah, meanwhile, just um, Tide's having a good good time bottom. As well as uh, Doom who got the... Or uh, he got the, <laughs> the... The wolf and the star face. That's not bad. I usually hate looking for the wolf and can't never find it, but he got it as, as the first. <laughs> yeah, in a 1v1 matchup definitely helps just, first of all, getting the last hit, especially if you're up against a Tide Hunter who reduces your base damage with his Anchor Smash. Yeah. 
So just getting the crit and extra damage helps out just last hitting as well as potentially harassing. Although the Tide Hunter definitely shouldn't feel threatened by a Doombringer. Especially since he has a Ring of Passy for extra armor plus the Kraken Shell. But oh, top lane Shadow Demon actually got telekinesed up. The arrow was off target, unfortunately. And now Rayfire Blast is actually gonna use it as well. Yes, he is like kills. Already the Strength Morph activated. Do they have enough damage? The Soul Catch. Come on, one more stun. Nope. Merchie actually gives up on the chase. But Momo, he might still be going down. But Noki is gonna go get the kill on the Shadow Demon. 4 for 2. Now Waveform comes over. Merchie will lose his life as well. Lobby, he has the leap. But can he escape even with that leap? Nicely done, though, to the low ground. But he might yeah, still get caught. A DK coming from the other side. And his turn is gonna try to deny himself to the creeps. Oh, really smart place by Lavi. He knew he was a corner for sure. Man, this this is going so well for me. Six and two, four and a half minutes in. It's the exact opposite of last game where we had one kill in eight and a half minutes. Yeah. So oh. Tyus just hit six. So uh, maybe he will just look for going for the top lane and try to get the kill and get the tower. I don't think he can solo kill, or maybe, he oh, he doesn't have the guys for solo kill on Doom. Yeah, usually when you're in a 1v1 matchup, especially against melee heroes, you still go for the one pointing gush and just leave Kraken Shell as one. Yeah. Uh, he went for the so called safer build, I guess, but mid lane, we might see another kill. Dragon Tail is there on GPX, never mind, he gets silenced up, but Impet is coming out from Noki, already he's level 6, there's a tornado for some additional slows, and they didn't even need the Dragon Tail in the end. And with the Elder Dragon form, they can actually even go for the tower as well. I'm kind yeah, of surprised the Enchantress Mi is rotating away. Mirana coming in to get the kill on Doom, but uh, Doom actually has a ward, so he sees him. And Mirana still level 2, minute 5 and a half. So I guess Mirana and Shadow Demons are really suffering this game. That's what happens when you just roam around, but you don't really get the kills from them. So you aren't pulling, getting any farm from that. Noki already almost level 7 on the Enchantress yeah. thanks to multiple And Blasty gets CP top and the ultimate is the Morphling. Oh. Maybe he's gonna drop you. Well, he should fall down, silence up, but he wants to get the counter kill. Never mind, Brave Blast secures the kill. So, at least I have to get one in return and Morphling will. He's still farming a pretty damn well. 30 and 1. And Momo now. Oh, Soul Catcher, if you right click, Shivix, you can do it, man. One more right click. Does get the kill. So, at least Bloodseeker getting some revenge there. And they need it pretty bad, but to be honest, although Myth, they're ahead in kill still, 7-4. to four. Just looking at the last hit table, Scythe, they aren't doing that bad at all. Tidehunter keeps on farming up, already has a game boots. And now Chibix, oh, one stun comes out, the second stun as well, Impetus to fly, Noki. Man, he's playing so ridiculously well on the Enchantress. Yeah, Scythe is really suffering again at this game. They really need Tide to start roaming, since he got 6, he's actually 7 now. So we need to see some more uh, help from, um, or support actually, from the Tidehunter into the lanes. Yeah, and actually Tidehunter, he's going for a straight up mech. Which is, I kind of like a mech better in this situation than just going for straight up Link Tiger. Because there's nobody else to actually build the mech for you anyway. And you probably want to take fights with the lineup that you have. But mid lane, they have the rupture on Chibix, will he use it? Yes he will, my pro, he gets caught, silenced up as well, nice telekinesis, but Brave Fire Blast onto Momo, should be an easy kill for the Miracle, gonna help out a little bit. And well, still no gush, but in the end, that is the kill going for Chibix. And yeah, Doom, I actually used Doom on Shadow Demon. Uh, oh, the stun onto Miracle under the tower as well, he's dropping low here, but he pops the Ravi just as Lakel's TP is in the way for never mind. The breathe fire gets the kill and now Mercio uh, slowed up as well. Wait for me is there. KYT comes in, Impetus and Mercio. He's gonna fall down. No reincarnation. Oh, the stun onto Chibix as well. Nice defensive disruption, but I don't think it will change the outcome. And yeah, Chibix goes down indeed. And that was a disaster of a fight for Scythe. Plus, they lose the tower on top of that, so that is a lot of gold going for me. And looking at the early graphs. 3,000 gold lead for Myth, XP 5,000, oh my god. That's a, such a substantial lead this early on. Yeah, yeah that, this is a huge lead. Like, they are uh, so, like, DK and had a really, really good start. It means that he can just, um, they, oh, they also got the mid tower. So it's one tower for uh, Myth Trust at the moment. And let's see, uh, Rubik's rotating bottom, he's still level 4, not 6. And Mirana still also level four, so like they're getting a bit more experience, but and especially Wrath King, he needs his level six. 
Oh yeah, I mean, he just finished up this power threat, so he's not doing that well at all. As KYT, he actually went for the hand of Midas on the Doombringer. Just gonna boost up his farm even more and just go for the unkillable, maybe like Aura Doombringer, Shiva's card, <laughs> AC or something. Uh, I think he will go for the Blink Dagger to initiate. They really need some initiation, they don't really have anything. So I guess Doom will go for the Blink Dagger just to initiate. And then follow up by the more playing on DK and Rubik. Well, yeah, that is true enough indeed. To be honest, like, especially recently in the latest patches, I feel like it's whoever has the be better initiation usually just wins fights as well as the game. Like, having a Batrider or Centaur is just so damn good yeah. for your team. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree, definitely agree with that. So it comes out to initiation. But, like, Doom, he really needs to get the Doom off on, on either Bloodseeker or the, the, the Sidehunter, I think. Just to stop them from using Ravage or. Uh, Bloodseeker ultimate, so they actually can do more. But they're coming from behind, smoked side. It's gonna be a huge team fight here in bottom lane. Yeah, they should set up an easy kill on the Doombreaker potentially. They don't have any vision yet, but they're gonna go in. Disruption comes out. There's the Soul Catcher arrow to follow. It is spot on. He activated his Scorcher, healing up a little bit, but it's gonna fall in the end. Nice telekinesis by Momo. I shoot the stunts onto two heroes when he drops him down. But Rubik is gonna lose his life. Leap comes out from lobby. Oh, but Impetus, Noki gets a counter kill. Now wait for one to three heroes. Mercer still dropping low. He has his reincarnation, but really doesn't want to lose it. 260 second cooldown. And Noki, well, he's too low on mana to give pursuit. But a two for one, at least they get one counter kill plus the reincarnation on cooldown. So And meanwhile, DK got the top tower tier one and now hitting on the on the tier two tower. Oh, wow, so I mean to be honest. I think it's actually worth it for Mifta in the trade. Although, yeah, yeah. some more engagements like Kels. Does he want to go in? He's low on mana. There's the Ravage. He was waiting for the KYT. Stunned up as well. Silence. He goes down once again. Can they go for more like Kels? He is hanging around. They really need to fall back because they're, they're losing their tier 2 tower bottom. And the, yeah, they're doing that now. Tower on TP. Uh, yeah. So it's actually now um, if Trust can get a kill in the, in the bottom lane. Yeah, they're looking for it. Oh my god, this this is just non-stop action, 21 kills. Oh, a nice stun onto the Rubik. The arrow to follow up as well, should be an easy kill, but the nature intended, can they keep them alive? This Shadow Demon disruption comes off Momo, somehow still alive. Now, will finally take a fall as Lakels. He's on the run as well, another stun. He is morphing into strength, will it be enough? The waveform comes out, Noki. He has to escape as well, and they will, everybody, just skip away. Of course, except for the Rubik. But just net worth wise, the Dragonite is doing so damn well and Morphling, not too bad. And now they're gonna go for Merchant, but no stuns. Nice TP out. It's just so common that Morphlings, they don't go for Adaptive Strike before <laughs> level 9 or 10. Yeah. And still, they really need that mechanism up on Sidehunter. He really, really needs it to get as fast because they have, we have seen a lot of action during the map. And if you had the mech earlier, you know, when they pushed bottom tower, I think this, they could actually get the tower. But now it looks the other way around. DK is getting the bottom tier 2 tower. Yeah, actually, I was thinking like who's gonna go for mech on myth, whether the enchantress or. But looks like KYT on the Doomringer is gonna get, build the mech before the blink at least. Yeah, before the blink. Um, I, I still think if you win. Well, it's fine to go. Yeah, it's okay to go to the mech first before the blink, just to make sure that they win team fights or they can stay alive in the team during the team fights. It also means that they can go for the Roshan or the mech. Um, yeah, DK got the regen room. Maybe they will, if they get some enchanted creeps, they can go for the Roshan. Well, I guess my pro is going to be the initiator for them. He went for a Shadow Blade on the Dragon Knight. It's not yeah. an item you see that much anymore. It used to be a really go to item on Dragon Knight. And well, he might get the kill with it on the Brave King. Shadow Blade, he's gonna go in. Noki is there as well. The impact is doing so much damage in my pro. Elder Dragon form, Dragon Tail, Breed Fire will probably get the kill, and indeed that is the case. But yeah. I actually thought that they're probably gonna continue, but since they don't see too many of Scythe's players on the map, they don't want to take the risk. Yeah. Still, Scythe doesn't have any vision on the map, only here in the top. And that's the only ward they have, so they're like completely blindfolded. Oh and man, that, that is just so hard to play against. And the supports, they can't even go ward properly because... Yeah, they... Shadow Demon is still level 5. So it's, they are really suffering from, from the miss... I mean, they didn't really get any kills with, on their rotations. And that's what you really need when you go roaming. You really need kills and that's how you get gold on the supports. But yeah, they're just waiting here to get experience and protecting Rift King. And I still think Myth Trust is the perfect time for them to go Russian. 
With the enchanters, actually, it doesn't have a single point into untouchables. Has, of course, maxed out nature's antenna, so that could be used to tank it all up, but oh no, they're gonna smoke as a free man unit. Mech is almost finished on KYT as well. Yeah, and Tyler actually Flynn is also his mech. And he has Ravage, so. Yeah, it's gonna, and they actually got the ward for Roshan now, so. But they're gonna smoke gank 5. Uh, 4 man, and they're. yeah. Oh man, this... To be honest, if they get the Doom on the Tide Hunter, it's gonna be so GG in the fight, because no Ravage and no Mech. They just don't have any sustain, not the lockdown. And they find Chibix first, the Impetus is already flying. Momo is actually going for another target, Moonlight Shadow comes out as well. Do they have any detection? Yes, they have the Satyrs. There's the Doom on Chibix, just in case. Ravage comes out to hit all the heroes, oh, cool. Arrow to fly as well, Momo. He's the one getting caught by it, but KYT, nice disruption, Momo. Goes down a one for one so far. A nice war stomp by KYT onto two heroes. We for on top of them as well. Mech comes out, but just the damage is a little bit too high. But the Kraken Shell Miracle gets rid of the Dragon Tail. They're gonna go for Merchant next. Reincarnation is actually off cooldown already. So, Myth, they're not gonna get any more kills. I think they will rotate into the, into the Russian pit now after they do work. I really feel they need to go Russian to get that. Well, they definitely have the ability to do so if they just decide it. But looks like so far they're like, just... Like Ravage is off cooldown now. Well, we will see. Maybe they wait for Doom to finish his mech first. Yeah, it certainly doesn't look like Roshan is <laughs> on their mind at the moment at least. Like Elf doesn't have the Lincolns yet either, so maybe they're like, okay, we could probably take it, but it's not the safest of plays maybe. So just playing it safe, not giving away any kills, and just farming up the next big items. But Scythe, I mean, do you think they can actually take a fight without the Ravage, or...? Um, I, yeah, oh, we will see, as Rapture is there, okay, wait, he slowed up as well, Arrow to follow Doom, he's dropping extremely low, but somehow still alive, finally falls down. Lakel just replicates himself out of there, Momo might get caught by Chief Shook of course, without the Rapture you can't really do anything to stop them from just running. So DK is going for BKB for his next item build. But that's pretty good because he can just touch uh, the Ravage and Miran arrow and they have so much stun on the side lineup. And yeah, Doom, yeah, still yeah, he didn't have his mech yet. And Merfling still has no more um Lincoln Sphere. So uh, Chiblix is still going for the same build. He got the drums and face boots with the killing blade on Plus Seeker. And we're gonna see probably the blade main next time. Well, he definitely needs some extra items. He's actually died six times in this game as well. Is it actually the most deaths on. Yeah, Chiblix actually has the most deaths in this game. Rubik is closely behind with five together with the Shadow Demon. So, five second cooldown on Ravage. I think they will go for the push. Maybe they will smoke and go from the behind. Oh, they're actually pinging out Roche and maybe they expect them to be at Roche. And game's gonna be paused and unpaused immediately after. And the smoke's gonna be up. And there's Plotsig in the front and tight right behind him. So let's see. Yeah, they go around for it. They gotta spot Rubik. I mean, giving away Rubik, not too bad for me, to be honest, at this point in time. Actually, he used the Blood Rage on Miracle in return, oh, but... He just got <laughs> melted down. To be honest, I think that was like the best possible solution for me, only losing a Rubik. Of course, they will lose the tier 1, but they would have lost tier 1 anyway, I think, with the Ravage and the Rupture. Plus, they just avoid giving away too many unnecessary kills like this. Mm. Uh, so, Rift King is sitting on 2.5k. What's, what do I actually think he's gonna go for? Or, well... Doom finishes up his mech at least. Actually, it took him quite some time. He was so close to it ages ago already. But I am so looking forward to what item actually Merchu on the Brave King is gonna go for. As Roshan is going on for Myth Thrust. My pro, he's the one tanking it up with his Dragon Blood, with the extra armor, plus 14. Sitting on 21 armor altogether. Already going for the BKB. Just needs the gold for the recipe. And Hand of Might is easy item for Brave King. Wants to catch up in farm as well as the levels. Get that level 16, level 3 ultimate as soon as possible. And now Roche easily gonna go for them, Scythe. They don't contest this. Either they didn't know it was going on, 
Well, which is most likely the case since they don't have any vision at all on the map still. Just look at the minimap. No vision at all. Of course, there's only one observer by myth as well. But they have a lot of sentries, so... Just, that makes up for it a little bit. Noki, he is going for the Agonim Scepter on the Enchantress. With... Are there any big, other big item pickups? Not so far, I think. Lincoln's Fear Fiend still not kills, plus another 1.3k gold. But mid lane now, tier 1 tower being pressured by Scythe. But KWT, if he gets the Doom or Miracle, they can easily take a fight. Are they gonna go for it? Toll is gonna chase them down in. Snare goes on to Merchu. He has the reincarnation, of course, so not the good target to initiate one anyway. And nothing is gonna come out. And now, they... They look like they want to chase, they were trying to chase as luck else, he wants to come in from behind as well. Oh, this is a pincer morphling, maybe not the best hero to pincer on my pro, activate his elder dragon form. They catch, Kai Waiti is dropping solo, there's the ravage as well, just to ensure the kill on Doomrigger, they will get it before the tomb goes out. Momo, a nice telekinesis onto Chibix, actually dropping him down, and now, well, he falls to the impetus, my pro, dropping low as well, but never mind, he's just turning it around, dragon tail onto Merchu, easy kills, easy life, Doomrigger even buys back, reincarnation was pop, was in the middle of five enemy heroes. He's gonna fall down, and was it really only a 2 for 0? I guess it was, as Tombrigger bought back as well, but they are gonna go to pressure down the tier 2 now, and more likely than not, they actually might get it. Just without the Ravage type, they don't have enough just pure team fighting in them, especially since KYT is back on the Doombringer, has himself the Doom available. And well now... Loki getting closer to his Aghanims, of course. Only 1.4k away. And... Yeah. Did you actually see the fight? Or... No, I actually just missed it. I just had to do one really quick thing. And now I'm back. Anyways, uh, well, surprisingly, they got the Roshan and the two towers. Actually, they had just sit on one last tier two tower bottom. And they're actually, actually getting picked up by Enchantress. That's the next objective in the game. And actually, no Ravage on tight. They're still suffering uh, supports. Um, yeah, they, they got level 8, they got their ultimates now. Mana boots both and wards up. And Mirana got for the medallion. That's interesting, never seen that on the Mirana. Yeah, I mean, I don't really understand it too much either. Because it's not like they have too much physical damage, at least not yet. Yes, Brave King can crit and whatnot, but not really gonna get it anytime soon. And actually, he's maxed up his vampiric aura. Instead of the Mortal Strike. It's usually if you're carry you go for straight up Mortal Strike, I think, or correct me if I'm wrong. Um Mortal Strike? Yeah. No, I yeah, yeah, usually you go for a Mortal Strike. I uh, I'm just surprised because I saw him with two point five K gold and he just bought the Midas instead. And uh, that's pretty confusing. Like twenty or uh, forty minutes or fifteen minutes in game he bought the Midas. Uh that's pretty questionable. Um he really needs some items, maybe a BKB or, or yeah, it's different, it's difficult now to say what he should get. They're really behind Scythe in this game. Yeah, and Momo, he even picks up an early gem for their team as well, just to make sure they have even more map control, and of course, just to counter that Moonlight Shadows as well. Mm. But man, Scythe, oh, it's gonna be so hard. I mean, if you look at pure late game, even that myth has a lockdown with Doombringer, Dragon Knight. So the Rav is going to be used on the Dragon Knight and the arrow is going to follow up. And now he used the PKB and he got a good... Oh, the mech, the TP flip is successful. <laughs> oh my god, he gets away. Are you kidding me right now? They don't even get that kill. That mech just completely saved his life. Yeah, he's so tanky as well. Plus 14 armor. That's really a lot. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much wasted the Ravage now. And it's actually now time to push uh, the bottom tower. It's actually also getting pinged out, I think. Because no Ravage, um, they still have the Mulan Shadow, but no uh, Blood Rage. Uh, Rapture. Yeah. So Morphling has That's the shotgun Blade. already. T 22 minute shotgun Link and Sphere. What is this game? 522 gold per minute. Yeah, she's gonna get a bit scouted by the Titan Hunter. And Titan Hunter is building a refresher. Like That's can maybe be... even kill him. Shotgun comes out, he actually uses the mech. The waveform might have been enough. But doesn't want to take the chance, man. This... Wow. Dragon Knight just kills off the Shadow Demon. I guess Shadow Demon wanted to ward or de-ward. Mm, he wanted to de-ward. <laughs> and ward, both think at the same time. Anyways, Doom is up and uh, Dragon has in the ultimate form. So they should really much go for the tower. 
I don't know what they are waiting for. They have all still the ages, and it's going to be reclaimed in, in one minute. Well, Lakel, maybe if he really wants to, he can just. Well, he is mo more or less just full on agility morphed anyway at the moment. But just go blow somebody up, lose the ages, come back with full HP and escape. As Brave King picks up his Blink Dagger now, so that definitely helps out with the initiation. Especially as Miracle, he's gonna go for straight up Refresher Orb by the looks of it. Yeah, so Skelting as you bought a Nightman, it's gonna be a Blink Dagger just for the initiation. So Tide is not yet a Blink Dagger, so it's gonna be Brave King who's gonna be in the front and initiate. But yeah, I think it's gonna be a, a trade from tier 1 to tier 2. Because they don't really want to fight, they still see that the morphing has ages. And but I think I really think that Nusrex can go all the way to tier 3 and get the tower. I mean, what strategy stop them? It's not like Scythe. If they start TPing now, it's still gonna take them some time before they get it. Yep, Elder Dragon form activated. Even a replicate made of that by Lakels. So, double Elder Dragons. Although, he's actually, never mind, gonna use it just defensively, gonna set it back, but oh, shotgun, Shadow Demon, bye bye. Just in a flash, waveform damage, not even necessary, just ethereal blade, adaptive strike, and easy kill. Yeah. If they wanna play it safe, they just fall back and wait for the Roshan and defend their top tower and mid tower. Yeah, I think they will do that. And, well, really, Scythe is really far behind, they really need some items on the, on the Wrath King and the Bloodseeker. He got the the blade mail finish. Now he's maybe going for either a Sang Yasha or a BKB. I think BKB is the best item here against the shotgun morphling and the DK son. So yeah, it's maybe yeah, it's gonna be a BKB definitely. Mirana, he, yeah, he got power threats now. He's still poor support. Uh, how how does like a blood seeker work? When you have a BKB, you first blood rage yourself, then activate BKB because blood rage can't be purged by it. By can or can it? Uh, I think it dis the BKB dispelled the the blood rage if you use it first, but you can't use the upper. Of course, side. I mean, Bloodseeker can easily blood rage up the Rave King as well, boost up his damage because, mm. I mean, yeah, you can cast the Rave Fire Blast, but no big deal, I guess. Plus, you have the reincarnation anyway if you die. Yeah, he can also just silence the Rubik or the the Doom. <laughs> but we will see. Um. So Bloodstick is going to get sp spotted by this ward here, and he's going to get pinged out as well. So Titus in this middle with Ravage, and he actually is not pretty far away from his uh, refresher. Yeah, oh, yeah. they're initiating on the room that he's going to get away pretty easy. Yeah, they need the Demonic Purge to follow up for the additional mm. slow deck. They actually might get the tower, or... No, oh, the impetus comes in, there's the Ravage though, but Doom up on Miracle, he can't use the mech. Now Merchu actually, he might get the kill on my pro, they will as well. Oh my god, they had way more damage than I gave them credit for Merchu. He goes down, reincarnation was there, Chibix, nice telekinesis by Momo. He is thrown down, and now Chibix silences up KYT, but he's taking a stun in the face, impetus to fly. Make it a 3 for 1, and the tower also still stands. Yeah, I think it's pretty much over here, from here, to be honest. Uh, there's nothing more that Scythe can do. They used Ravage, they used everything, both reincarnation and Bloodseeker Ultimate. They bursted down the DK because he did not manage to pop his BKB. Um, unfortunately, but still, they still managed to lose that fight, and they're just suffering from now. And Doomy got his BKB as well now, he can buy it. Man. Uh, Whoa, shotgun! Bye bye, Shadow Demon. <laughs> Man, it, it must be so fun for the Morphling at the moment. This early on, having the shotgun just complete dominance. But to be honest, man, if Myth, and they most probably will, if, but if they win this game, it just will have so much to do with the early rotations of the Enchantress. I mean, he just made yeah. so that they won every lane, more or less. Mm. He puts a lot of pressure on the bot in the middle. He, they got the first bot together. And and still, at the top lane, he also managed to help out the Morphling and the Rubik. So a lot of credit goes to the, to the Enchantress. Oh, the Rupture game. goes out on a Rubik! Is that the, really the initiation target you want to go for? KYT arrow in the face. Chibix actually got the stun by my pro, but Miracle now. He is on the run, Chibix. Still wanting to man fight KYT, actually will fall down here. Oh, never mind, Waveform gets the kill just as the Rask click was about, about to come out from Chibix. <laughs> Refresher Orb is there on Miracle, but is it too little too late? But they're definitely gonna get the Rex now. Um, I think they'll fall back and go for the Russian now to play safe, but I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe go for it. Oh, actually, Blink stunned by Merchu, but he doesn't have the reincarnation. Oh my god, just. Suicide mission. <laughs> Just 
Kamikaze full way, although Kamikaze would a successful one at least. You would get the kill in return, but man, he had no chance at all. I think they know it's over. That's why he did it. Yeah, yeah I think he's just gonna be called down. So Mythrust, we had to wait for a long time for the game number two to actually happen, but Mythrust, they win this 2-1. They were so close to dropping down to the lower bracket because they almost forfeited the game straight out. But I guess they're pretty happy that they still got to play it since they are the grand finals. They are secured at least $400 prize now. So we're just going to see one last fight. Ravage comes out and never mind. Second Ravage, not making too big of a difference. <laughs> but yeah, just $400 guaranteed already for them. Yeah, it's over. GG. Um... Yeah, I really expected much more from Scythe in this uh, third game. Like, second game they played pretty, pretty well, and now it just looks like they... <laughs> I don't know what happened in this game. The support's roaming rotations was not the best, and I think they just, just have gone for the safe, uh, safe try lane for them, and just get the uh, pretty fat worth king. Yeah, just some small mistakes, but they still have a chance to get back into the finals as they drop down to the lower bracket consolation finals, which will be up against Imba Gaming Vietnam. Mm. I think it's played tomorrow, I'm not 100% sure, but if it is, we will be casting it. And of course, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and watching us throughout the entire Best of 3 series. And if you liked us, be sure to follow us on this channel, as well as Hefla TV 2 and Hefla Mok. And check out our social media, all of them are Hefla TV, Facebook, Twitter, and even VK for Russian viewers. And, well, huge thanks to Master Risk for casting with me. Yeah, no problem. It was always, it was fun to try it actually, since I'm pretty much new to this. Um, yeah. And I actually have a shout out to a friend. He's uh, Karaki from Sweden. Do you know him? Well, can you repeat the name? Karaki. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Anyways, uh, shout out to Karaki and uh, thank you all for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. And a really exciting uh, uh, best of three games to cast. And thank you for having me as well. Yeah, so that's going to conclude it for the day as we still have 30 minutes time to prepare ourselves for TI4 for an epic watching marathon. Four games, same time, multi-twitch in the making. But yes, guys, this is going to be it for us. Just some songs to finish up the stream. And of course, if you really, really loved us, you can always support the casters directly by either subscribing to the channel, getting some cool subscriber emotes for yourself, which you can use on any Twitch channel, of course, if you subscribe to us already, or just donate, but that's if you're feeling generous and feel it would be worth it. But yeah, once again, good night, guys. Have fun watching TI4.